Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Total War Room 2, the Julia Campaign. Well, it's been a little bit of a while since we left off last time due to the fact that we've been having the uh, marathon sessions. It's been a couple of weeks. But as we did leave off, we unified the, uh, the, the Iberian area, demolished the petty tribes that were giving us issues, and now it's all ours as we rub our grubby little mitts together. Now this session is not actually going to be a full-blown session. What this session is, it's a precursor to the, the, the session that will start on Monday. You see, normal schedule will be resumed, normal service will be resumed on Monday, with, and we're back to the normal schedule. Monday is Rome 2 day, but before that I thought we'd take this session just to highlight a few things as to how the Empire is going to change. We have a new leader of House Julia. House Julia, of course, controlling 54% of the Senate influence and therefore is a very influential party, and therefore he is a very influential man. He's a student of philosophy. He's 25, he's young, he's a thinking man. And he's a type of man that wants to stamp his authority and make his mark in Roman history. So as he sat down, thinking things through and looking at the Empire as a whole, he's come up with one of two things. That he wants to, what he wants to implement, to increase the the efficiency of the empire, and it all relates to building work. Rome, in days gone by, has been a little bit sloppy in building. Buildings have been thrown up willy nilly, without much thought, without much strategy, without thinking about the benefits of various locations in the in the world and how they can be used. <clears throat> uh, to efficiently improve Rome's standing in terms of income, in terms of trade, in terms of farming, whatever it might be. And therefore he thinks that by being a little bit more careful and by building <coughs> buildings in provinces that have specific strategies assigned to them, he thinks that he can improve the efficiency of the empire and how it's run. So just like with our legions down here that are going to be given a facelift as they prepare for their, their, their campaign in the north, so too will the Roman provinces get a facelift and how they operate. So that's going to be what this session's about. It's going to be about how we're structuring our provinces and how we're building our buildings to uh, be more efficient. So if that doesn't interest you, then this session's probably not for you. But I thought I'd do it anyway, rather than uh, tagging it on to the uh, start of Monday session. Because it's going to take a little bit of explaining. So Burrus has sat down and thought that there are three types of province that we can use. There could be more if you want to be pedantic. But three overriding uh, provinces in his, in his vision. There is a military province. Provinces that specialise in military have one, have, have one function. There are trade provinces, provinces that specialise in bringing money to the empire. And then there are provinces that specialise in producing food, allowing all the, the, the food producing buildings to be built there so that food can be shipped off to areas of the empire that are in need of, 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 of feeding. And they are the three types of province that he sees. Now by placing these provinces in various points in the, in the, in the map, this is how he sees Rome's efficiency being increased. Now, he also believes that we have four areas. We have the area of Italia, which was our initial starting uh, location. We have the area of Germania, up here, as a second area. We have the region of Gaul, as a third area. And we have the recently conquered Iberia, which, which is a fourth area. Now, having to upgrade all the buildings and, and, and maybe tear some buildings down and change some buildings over to, to fit with this new policy. It's going to take time. It's also going to take a lot of money to do this. So to do it all in one time is going to be quite quite you know expensive and, 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 and you know infeasible. So what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to do it one area at a time. Now the first area we're going to focus on is the original starting area, the Italian area. And the four provinces that we're going to focus on to start with is Cisalpina, Italia, Corsica and Sardinia, and uh, Magna Graecia. So let's, let's look at more detail about how Burrus's vision is going to take shape. 
So first of all, we'll focus on trade provinces. Trade provinces are best served in areas with lots of ports. So uh, Corsica et Sardinia and Magna Graecia are two prime candidates in the Italian area to be focusing on trade. So what type of buildings do we want to see in these trade provinces? Well, we want to see trading ports, harbours, ports that bring income. We want to see wine shops, more wealth from commerce. Why commerce? Well, because of the commercial stimulation edict. You can see here that these trading ports give a plus 5% wealth to the commercial stimulation edict from all commerce buildings. So the more commerce buildings we can put into this province, the bigger impact the commercial stimulation edict will have. Therefore, the more money the province will produce. So here in Magna Graecia, we're tearing down the Amphora Kiln. And we're going to put here a Temple of Neptune. Temple of Neptune benefiting from the presence of the ports. Why am I building the temple in the capital city? Because I read, and didn't know until I read it, that if we place a temple in the minor, uh, pro minor settlements of a province, they can only build, be built up to level 3. If you place them in the capital city, they can be raised to level 4. Slightly more efficient, I'd say. So we're tearing down this and putting a Temple of Neptune here. We're upgrading the wine shop to increase the commerce value. And um, we're tearing down the Shrine of Jupiter, and we're going to replace that with an Auxilia Barracks. Another one of Burris's visions is that every province should have at least one Auxilia Barracks in it, so that across the whole of the Empire we can produce troops at a local level. So all provinces will contain an Auxilia Barracks. So Magna Graecia is going to get an Auxilia Barracks down here in replacement of this temple. So that is the build policy for the for the trade provinces. Harbours, temples of Neptune, wine shops for commerce, and then wherever else there's a gap, we'll just focus on food. So that is Magna Graecia. It's been converted into a much more efficient trade hub. Similarly over here in Corsica at Sardinia, this is going to be a trade hub as well. So these ports that were initially food ports are going to be converted into trading ports. Wine shop is being upgraded. Again, commerce. The food is the food place, the irrigation ditch is going to be increased. And we are converting this was going to initially be a cattle trader. We're going to convert that into an amphitheatre to help with public order. And again, this temple is going to be converted into a temple of Neptune. So a lot of conversion work going on here to convert it into a much more efficient trade hub. The, you know, the trade province. So there's work going on there. And again, when these two lands, these two provinces, have got their buildings finished, the commercial stimulation edicts will be placed here and here to give us that extra boost to income. So moving on then to the second type of province. It's the military build province. We've had the trade, this is now the military build provinces. Now military build provinces are going to, there's going to be one per area. So Italia in this area, Subia in this area, Celtica in this area and Tarraconesis in Iberia. They're going to be the four earmarked military provinces. But for now we're focusing on just Italia. Another thing which Burris has noted is that in the capital cities there are buildings that can be built here that can't be built elsewhere. And by cluttering up the capital with buildings that can be built in minor province in minor settlements, we are hindering ourselves. 
So for instance, the cohort barracks, the workshops, they can be built in the minor settlements. So do not build them in the capital city, he says. Build them in the minor settlements and free up the capital city for buildings such as gladiatorial schools, temples, whatever else you want to build there, fountains, whatever it might be. Other buildings that can't be built elsewhere can be built here. Let's leave space for those buildings. So he's tearing down the cohort barracks, he's tearing down the workshops, and he's going to replace those into the minor settlements. So here we're converting this into a uh, field of Mars so that we can build the the, uh, the, co the cohort barracks. We're tearing down these two buildings here. Cohort, the, the cohort barracks or the auxiliary barracks can be placed here. And uh, workshops here and here. Similarly, as explained before, Temple of Mars placed in a minor settlement here no use can only be built up to level three so we're going to switch that out and put that into Roma so that it can be upgraded to level four and that will hopefully increase the effectiveness of the military producing output of Italia so pro so, so workshops and barracks switched out to the minor settlements and a temple here and then we've got extra slots for a gladiatorial school and whatever else we want to build there and finally, finishing off then with our food producing settlements, our food producing provinces. Cisalpina is earmarked for that purpose. Auxilia Camp in a capital city, waste of space. So we're tearing that down and we're going to replace that into here. Freeing up a slot for something else. It's a food producing settlement, so we're going to specialise in food producing buildings. Therefore, the, 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 the trading ports are going to be switched to fishmongers instead of trade hubs or, or shipwrights or whatever it might have been. All the farms built and delicatessens to burners to increase the food output. And here we're going to build a temple. So that's the four, that's the three, sorry, the three types of provinces that we're going to have across the empire. The trade, the military, and the food producing. And by being more selective and more careful with which buildings go in which slots, we can better serve these provinces with the right buildings to help boost income, to help boost the food supply and more importantly perhaps to help boost the, uh, the, the trade. So the building work is, in, is started in the Italian area and when it's finished in the Italian area we'll move on to Germany, we'll move on to Gaul, we'll move on to Iberia. But we've just started off in this particular area to see how it goes. So that's it. Burrus has instigated the change and hopefully we'll see Rome's uh, stability, its production, its efficiency increase as a result of more structured building throughout the empire. So whilst we have a moment of peace, because we're at war with no faction, we are surrounded by allies and friends. It is unlikely that we are going to be attacked anytime soon. So we can utilize this time of peace. We can utilize the time that we are taking to retrain the armies and get them shipped off north for a new campaign. We can utilize that spare time that we have to go through the various buildings across the land and increase our efficiency. So join me on Monday for the start of the Rome 2 campaign again, proper, and hopefully we'll start to see our armies take shape and prepare themselves for war with Britannia. See you then.